What you can't see in this beautiful cinematic shot is that the spotlight in the back is made from a roll of paper, and the camera is being pushed on a skateboard with one hand, while the other hand is dimming up a light. You're fading it in yeah, on like your phone. Oh my god. That's the creator, Gox, and his videos are like watching a freaking magic trick. He captures these rich, dynamic, cinematic shots that look like they would only be achievable on a Hollywood set. To film that, I used a C-stand to get a top-down shot, and then I used two skateboards to move it. <laughs> so I put the C-stand on the skateboard. No! And that's my dad's hand, because the marker can't support the weight of the camera. I like to have small details that I know not everyone is gonna notice, but the people who pay a lot of attention in the video are gonna say, oh, that's cool. I'm sitting down with Gox and breaking down the first minute of one of his videos to see if I can get to the bottom of the detail orientation and craftsmanship that make his work so extraordinary. Gus. We're gonna watch your video. I finished a sketchbook in 24 hours. And I think the thing that is so incredible about your work is the amount of detail and energy that you pack into every second you. of your videos. Every second is meticulously crafted and designed to be exactly what you want. Yeah. And I think it's a, it's a level of craftsmanship and creativity that we we rarely see not on youtube we rarely see in the world <laughs> we rarely see people care this much about every little detail and i think that's just what really stands out about your work so what i want to do in this episode is really dive in to all the details that make you who you are as an artist thank you thank you very much uh, I'm, I'm excited to do this and this is a great peak of a video Okay, I'm stopping right there. Yeah. <laughs> How did you do this? So so you're you're obviously motion tracking the title. Yeah. We think it's a still title, and then as soon as the video comes in, it matches the... Tr How yeah. did you do that? Are you using, like, After Effects or something? Yeah, for that I used After Effects. First, I uh, wrote the title in the video, in the clip. Uh -huh. And then I brought that to After Effects, tracked uh, the title, uh, the sequence with, the like, the living room. Right. And then I did a still frame for the black section, for the steel section. And that's why it's not moving in the black yeah, section. Yeah, that's why it's not moving. You th you, yeah, I wanted to have a little bit of surprise at the start. Like, right. I, like, and I did that. Yeah, grab, you know what's funny attention. about it is like a lot of, a lot of um, videos on the internet do like a cold open, you know, yeah. where there's like the, the first minute is really exciting. But what you're doing is you're sending us uh, I mean, maybe I'm misinterpreting this, but it seems like a signal that you put a fuck ton of hours and energy <laughs> into the smallest details. In the first three seconds of the video, we know that like you're going to give us a bunch of really exciting detail and we need to watch closely. Yeah. It's kind of what that feels like. Yeah, maybe. I, I don't know if that I did that on purpose, but yeah, I, I like to have small details that I know not everyone is going to notice, but the people who like who pay a lot of attention in the video are going to say oh that's that's cool that's interesting yeah how so does he do that i have to ask you how long how many hours does it take to like do all that motion tracking uh -huh. on this shot and add that title like this where now we zoom past it yeah. the, like you have to create layers and depth spaces and things and after effect how long does that take uh, that's well i just used the tracking tool and then i played with uh, gaussian blur and a little bit of motion blur as well to make it smooth. It takes around an, uh, 40 minutes an hour for the title. Is that you? That's my brother. Yeah, that's my brother and my dad opened the door and I filmed the shot. I was gonna ask how you're able to... So where's... Oh, your dad's behind the door. Yeah, he's behind the door. He opened it. Yep. We did that a bunch of times because it was difficult. Yep. And my brother was standing there with the sketchbook. Okay. Right there. So, and you're filming it and you did this kind of swooping yeah. shot to yeah. go in the door and then come out. Yes. It looks like there's light beams coming <laughs> through the window. Do you have a fog machine or something? Are you hazing before you shoot? Yeah, that's a fog machine. Yeah. It's a fog machine with the... I, I'm lucky because my window has very good lighting. The light comes in the afternoon. It comes right inside and I have some trees so it gives this really, really cool effect oh my god okay and then this light what is this that's uh when i turned i think 17 my my dad got me some lights for me to start making videos and these are 
some uh, Amazon Lite, <laughs> some newer Amazon Lite. Now I got, it's funny because this video, I started uh, filming it in 2022. Yeah. So you can see the lights in some shots. And I finished it in 2023 where I got new lights uh, which and C stands. And then I said, oh, okay, now I have these good lights. I don't want them to be in the shots for, to make it a little more professional. So you can see this difference in this video. Got it. Yeah. Okay, so these are the old lights that these you have. These are had. the old lights, yeah. Okay, and this is your actual room where you do all your work. Yeah, 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 and where I sleep as well. Okay. Yeah. And so wait, so you said your dad helped you open the door. That's your brother. Yeah. But obviously the conceit is that this is you. Yeah, he looks just like me. <laughs> <laughs> and we can't really tell because he's he's hazed and backlit. Yeah, so yeah. you can't see it anyway. Um, and then you instructed him to just like have his back turned and hold up the sketchbook like this? Yeah, you... to yeah first have the hand here and then move it up. And then are you pulling focus or is this autofocus? That this is autofocus. It's autofocus. Yeah, auto okay. This is the most important sketchbook I have ever had. Was this your idea for the opening shot of the film to do this door push in? And yeah. that was so you wanted this to be the opening shot? Yeah, I had I, I don't do storyboarding. I, I kinda have it everything on my mind. And the only thing well, the main thing I had for the video was this shot. Like I wanted this shot to be the first shot and then go from there. And how did you how did you come up with this idea for the shot because this is a very striking thing to see on YouTube. You don't usually see something that looks like this. This looks like something from a Jean-Pierre Jeunet film. You know, it looks like <laughs> yeah. Amelie. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it's, it's I get my ideas from movies. I like I watch a bunch of movies and then I, like not not on purpose but some some of that sticks with me, and then I mix everything, and I come up with these ideas for. What what movies do you like? What 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 directors? I like well, I like everything. I like dramas. I like sad dramas. I like there's an Iranian director. Uh, his name is Abbas Kerstami. Uh, Mexican Iñárritu Kubrick. Oh, Kubrick is a huge inspiration. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For Absolutely. this video as well. Yeah, I watch a bunch of Kubrick films before filming this, so you can see hints. Amazing. Okay. And, and do you, when you map out a video like this, do you have the whole idea for the video in your head? Do you have like an outline for the video start to finish before you start shooting? Or are you just kind of shooting things that look cool and then you come up with a story as you're going? Uh, well, I, I kind of have an outline, but well, I know I want to, well, I know the theme of the video. I kind of know how I want to do it, but first I film this shot and then I say, oh, how can I follow up? And I film the next thing. Really? Okay, so you're actually, you're like in production, getting cool shots that you think are awesome. Yeah. Maybe even before you know where the story is going. Yeah. Okay, so it's it's very, um, it's very like emergent, the way yeah. you tell stories. Yeah, because I draw, so I don't, I don't really know what's going to happen next in my drawing. I don't know what I'm going to draw. So, yeah, I kind of go from there. And if I need to fix something or maybe to film something more, I, I go back and forward with editing, filming, editing, filming. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Okay, let's let's look at this lettering here. This is the most important sketchbook I have ever had. Okay, so are, is this um, DaVinci Resolve? Do you edit in DaVinci Resolve? Or no, you... I edit on Premiere. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay, got it. So you do, you do color correction in DaVinci Resolve? Yeah. Okay, so so then how do you how do you do that? Do you take the clips into DaVinci and then color correct and bring them back into into Premiere? Hey, well, first I edit everything in Premiere, then I export a ProRes file, yeah. uh, no compression ProRes file, right. and I export the timeline to have the cuts. Then I move that to DaVinci, it's a mess, I move that to DaVinci, uh, add the ProRes file, then add the timeline, copy the cuts, oh uh, my color God. correct, then I export it on ProRes again, bring it back to Premiere and do titles and finishing details. And then I export post on YouTube. Okay, that's a ton of yeah, workflow. Yeah, yeah. Is that just because you like DaVinci's color correction suite better than Premiere's? Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Are you reading a lot about color correction? Kind no, of no. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> right. I watch YouTube videos where I see, oh, this color is great. How, yeah. how did they do it? And I try new things. Which YouTube channels or videos do you like for like color correction? Because I've been watching a lot of color correction yeah. videos too. Which are the ones you like? Well, my favorite is uh, a YouTuber called Sir. He's great. He's from LA. His okay. colors are absolutely incredible. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And so you watch like his tutorials and stuff? For... Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Wow. Awesome. Okay, let's keep going. Why, you may ask? Well, 
let me explain. Okay, one more question about voiceover in mm -hmm. your videos. So voiceover is a common theme in your videos. And then it looks like sometimes you film after you've recorded your voice and you're mouthing to match your voiceover? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad you asked because a lot has changed since I last answered this question two years ago. For instance... How do you do voiceover? Do you have a nice mic or something that you use? Where do you record? I use, I use Adobe Audition for my voiceovers and I got a mic like five years ago, a Blue Yeti mic. Oh yeah, yeah. those are great. Yeah, and I, I use that one. Maybe it's not the most professional, but it gets the It's a great mic, it's, yeah. yeah. And it, it sits on your desk or something? Yeah, and, it yeah. sits on my desk and when I need it, I just bring it, Yep. Uh, record my voice and... Yeah, and that's the Blue Yeti, you The said. Blue Yeti, yeah. Okay. Okay, come on, like tracking shots and <laughs> stuff? Like what, so what do you have? Like rails above your desk and the camera's tilted down? How do you do this? Uh, to, that's later. The first shot is 2022, this is 2023. Okay. Uh, well, in the video, it's supposed to be 2019 because I built like a crazy story with this. Yeah. But to film that, I used a C stand. Yeah. For to get a top down shot, and then I used two skateboards <laughs> to move it. <laughs> so I put the C stand on the skateboards. No, you have your C stand on skateboards. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you're moving the skateboards with the C stand hanging over the desk. Yeah, and that's my dad's hand. That's not mine. What's your dad's uh, hand? The first I had one. just started high school. And that's I, my dad's hand. That's your dad's hand? Yeah. So you're doing the camera and you got your dad's hand. Yeah, he's supposed to be me. You can tell because he's, yeah, he's older than me. And, and do you say like, okay, open the computer now. Like, how are you doing it? How yeah. Do you yeah, I say first draw and then open the computer. We try uh, some shots, but I give them, yeah, I say now open. So you're like calling out instructions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of directing. So let's watch this beautiful shot. Thank you. By the way, Gus, this is so fun, man. <laughs> like, this is, this is fucking beautiful work. <laughs> Thank it's you It's so much. fun to dive into and hear how you think about this and how you do this. I think what's so exciting to me is like, you know, see, like hearing that it's your dad and that you got an Amazon light. Yeah. Like, like you're, you're, you're able somehow to achieve... Um, output that looks on par with like the best movies in the <laughs> thank world. You, thank you very much. And, and you're doing it with like skateboards. Yeah. And it's just incredible. So, okay, let's watch how beautiful this shit is. I got this one about four years ago. I had just started high school. Okay, is that the light from the actual monitor? Yeah, that's the light from the monitor. It has some haze machine to to get like a little bit beam. It gets, you yeah. can see the light. Yeah, that's the light. And I have a light over here. <laughs> filming the whole thing. Okay, and is that like a soft light with like a some kind of uh, um, diffusion over it or something? Yeah, that's a soft light with uh, this grid you put. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Do you happen to know what kind of light it is? Yeah, it's an Amaran 60X. Amaran Aperture 60X. Amaran 60X. Okay, yeah. all right, cool. This is, I mean, the, the glow of the monitor on the laptop and oh, on your yeah. hand looks so yeah. nice. I wanted to get that. So I opened uh, this tab which is just white, yeah. it has nothing on it, to get the light. Okay, got it. So you actually preloaded a tab that was white on the computer, yeah. and then did you turn up the, yeah, the, the, brightness, yeah, the brightness so yeah. that you got this lovely glow coming in? Yeah. God, it's so beautiful. Okay, Thank I have you. a question for you about haze and fog. So one of the things that you do really well is you create these hazy memory sort of nostalgic feelings by using the fog and the way light moves through fog. Um, how, do you, how do you do that and make sure that you get really deep, rich blacks and like mm -hmm. dark colors as well. Like how do you color correct those super hazy, milky shots to make them look full? Well, uh, first I don't try to put way too much fog. If I put way too much fog, I open the windows, <laughs> let a little bit go out and then I film. And on DaVinci, when I color grade, I just move the blacks down, a little bit more of contrast on, until I think the image looks good. And... Yeah. And then you go. Yeah, I don't really use the histograms. Oh, you don't? Okay, you don't use metering or, or no, tools like that? No, okay. I, I get confused with that. And it gets slower. So I, I go with the flow. And if I export it and the blacks look too black, then I go back uh -huh. and fix them. Okay, got it. So so you're really just using your eye looking at the yeah. looking at the screen without looking at like meters or tools. Measurements. Yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. Cool, and I needed a new sketchbook since my previous eight. Okay, now the camera's tracking backwards. Mm -hmm. So... What what is that now? Skateboards again? Yeah, skateboards and a tripod, and that's me and my dad is filming. Okay, so your dad's pulling the camera yeah. back now. Okay, got it. We're already filled out. After receiving it, I started carrying it around. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So I love this about your videos. There's this conceit that like there's a doorbell in the <laughs> yeah, package yeah. outside your bedroom. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Like that's kind of a, I mean, obviously that's the joke, but like where where is that where where is the inspiration for that idea coming from? Uh well, since I started I every every time I get a package it's outside my bedroom. Yeah. So I, I don't know what I did that. I didn't want to show the the front door of my house. So I just my bedroom. Yeah. And it stayed. Mm -hmm. and now every time I get a package, it's in the <laughs> outside my bedroom. It's so good. <laughs> Thank is, you. Is this um like when you're when you're setting up a shot like this? Is this blown out? Like, are you getting zebras here? Do you film with zebras? Uh, no, I don't. But I use I use the what's the the camera says if you're a overexposed, it's plus two. Right. Yeah, and it blinks. Oh, so, okay. So for that one, I was a little bit overexposed, but it was the look I went to get. Uh, I went to get like this light behind me yeah so so sorry what's this plus two thing you've got you oh, said yeah it's what is exposure compensation okay yeah. and, and is that on the a7s3 is that what uh, you use fx3 oh the fx3 yeah. yeah oh did you just get that i got it in 2021 okay yeah okay got it so you shoot all of your videos on the fx now well, everything yeah and then obviously your room again is super hazed right now yes, right like super a yeah ton super, of haze yeah. yeah okay all right cool. with me everywhere i went I used to draw on it almost every day. Okay, I had, like even the way you pick up the package there is so deliberate and funny. Like it's almost like cartoony or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, like cartoony. I, I Did you watch a lot of cartoons? I, I used to uh, SpongeBob. I, my favorite was, was SpongeBob, but this is, I think this is more Wes Anderson style. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it definitely is yeah. Wes Anderson. Oh, that's a good call out. Yeah, it's like robotic. You yeah, walk like, out. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so cool. Everywhere I went. I used to draw on it almost every day. Now, the camera's tracking backwards there, right? Yeah. So who's shooting that? My, my dad or my brother. One of... My dad or my brother. On a skateboard again. On a skateboard, yeah. And those are difficult to get because uh, the skateboard moves a little bit and it doesn't go still like like a Dollywood. Yeah. Uh, so for that one, it went a little bit like this and then I just fixed that in post. Oh, you do. So you like you you track and post using After Effects or something to make it smoother. Yeah, for that one I use Premiere. So I put a like a ruler, a, a line, a guide, and I just I just place it. Here. Oh, you just like keyframed it, yeah, frame by frame. Yeah, yeah. Really? Like for like that looks like it's a three or four second shot. So that's like 150 frames or something. Yeah, 150 keyframes tracking yeah, backwards. Yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it gets crazy sometimes. Yeah. So. <sighs> Okay, I I don't even know how to frame this question. It's just like, why do you care so much about all those little details? There's so many videos on YouTube where the camera moves a bit mm -hmm. and people don't spend six hours doing 180 keyframes yeah. to make it perfect. Why, why do you care so much about that? Uh, well, I really like uh, to make this type of video. I, I have a lot of fun. And I, I think I get a little bit obs obsessive with the little <laughs> details. Sometimes there's one shot where I feel it's a little bit off and I just obsess over it. I don't know if that's healthy, but I just want it to be perfect. And since I don't post that often, it's like a three mo two months between video. I, I want it to be really good. Yeah. 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 So, okay. So then your tr the trade-off in your mind is like, look, I'm not coming out with videos every week. Yeah. So I'm just going to make really great videos. And if they come out every... Two months or three months, fine. Yeah. Okay, got it. So you live right now with your... Who, 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 you live at home or where do you live? Yeah, I live at home with at my home. mom, my dad, and my brother. Mom, dad, and brother. Yeah. And it seems like everybody like helps you with your videos. Yeah, yeah. They Sometimes they don't want to, but <laughs> I, I ask, no, help me a little bit. Do they um, argue with you about shots and stuff or are you calling the shots? No, not really. Sometimes... They, well, sometimes they suggest maybe we should do it this way, uh -huh. but mainly I tell them and we, <laughs> we go from there. Sometimes it doesn't work the way, what I had in my head, Yeah. so we try different things. Are they filmmakers too? Is your brother a filmmaker? No, my brother is in high school. He's, he likes music production. Okay. Yeah. And my dad, my parents are musicians. Oh, they're musicians? Yeah. So they're they're in the arts. Yeah, they're they're in the arts. How cool are they? Professional musicians? Yeah, they play. Uh, my dad plays in the Philharmonic Orchestra. Oh my gosh! And my mom used to, and now she has a string quartet. 
Okay, so they're like super, they must be really supportive and excited yeah, that yeah, you're, yeah. okay, how cool. Wow. And then they also helped me, well, my dad helped me with the, now I use a lot of classical music, so he helps me with the music se selection sometimes. I edit and I show him, what do you think of this music? Yeah, okay, so where, where are you getting that music? I, uh, from the music licensing platforms, mainly MusicBet and Artlist. Yeah. I use those. It's so different again, than everything else on YouTube. It feels way more cinematic to oh, use classical. It feels very Kubrick, yeah, actually, yeah, to use classical cool, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, let's keep watching. Without prior notice, I stopped. Those shots, mm -hmm. it seems like there's some rotation. Like, what's happening there? Uh, that's, uh, so I went to show this passing of time and working on different uh, drawings. That's why I have different lighting for each drawing. I see. And I filmed that with a slider, a motorized slider. Okay, got it. And is it a curved slider, or how? Oh, or is the camera just on a? Yeah, spinner? you can. Uh, so it's a slider, and okay. you have to like one pole here, which you can move. And if you move it like this, the camera moves. I see. Right. So, so the camera's literally going like this. Yeah, as the it camera goes on is the slider. Going, yeah, like this. Okay, so you just got a little motorized slider, and so that's your hand, your drawing. Yeah. And you've got an automated uh, camera motion going. Yeah. And is it just going back and forth? Is that what's happening? Yeah, it's going back and forward, and I changed. Uh, the drawings with each movement and then I I did this matched cut so I placed the clips and tried to match them to do the cuts. Okay, so you're finding the exact point in the camera motion yeah. where you can cut that the camera's in the same place, the book is in the same place, your hand is in the same place, yeah. but it's a different drawing. Yeah. Oh, let's watch this. Day until without prior. Right there. Yeah. Notice. Right there. Yeah. God, that's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. What is the cinematic vocabulary or whatever that makes us feel like this is time passing? Is oh. it the lighting change? Yeah, I think it's the lighting because it's like different scenarios. So you can uh, feel like different days of me working that. Yeah. yeah. It feels like, yeah, it feels like a long time has passed when yeah. we see that motion tracking, different lighting, different, uh, different Day, drawings. Until without prior notice, I stopped. And then... The camera slider ended clearly here yeah. and stopped. Yeah. And then you closed the and book. And then I closed the book, yeah. And did you know, did you write the script first? Because the story and the video matches the script perfectly. I think for this one, I went a lot back and forth between the edit, the writing and the editing and the filming. So I think I filmed the first shot, then I filmed the next ones. Then I brought that to Premiere and checked if it was working. And then I, I, well, without a script, and the script usually goes at, at the end of the video, but just the rhythm, I went to get the rhythm right. In those two months, mm -hmm. are you kind of starting to edit and then shooting a little bit more and then putting that stuff in yeah. and then editing a little more? And then, okay, so you're like mixing, editing, production, post-production. It's all happening yeah, at the yeah. same time. Yeah, it's a bit of a mess, but... That's how, how I do it, yeah. I, I think that is such a great way. It, it feels like that. Yeah. Because, you. because you, you can, yeah, you get a level of detail and, and um, I don't know, you, get, you end up with shots like this yeah. that you may not have gotten if you just tried to write it all first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I also like to do everything chronologically. So that's why I, yeah. Okay, so you're actually, so you're not like going to the end of the video and then editing a scene here. No, no. You're literally just going yeah. second by second until you build the story you want to tell. Yeah. Oh, so cool. Um, I've talked to different creators mm -hmm. and editors and filmmakers about this. Some people really love chronology and some people don't work chronologically yeah. at all. And it just seems like it's whatever type of... Maybe uh, the, the people who don't work chronologically, they're more organized or they, they have the, their plan really well done because i saw the casey episode he edits chronologically yeah i have sort of two rules when it comes to editing one is that i can only edit chronologically i start with the first frame and when i get to the last frame the movie's done sometimes i do uh, like i storyboard complex shots uh, i think i might have done it for the for the floating sketchbook i have my notebook here if you want to see it uh, but it helps me a lot that I edit and film, so I go back and forward. So in case I need a, a shot to to fit the rhythm of the music or to fit the story, I can film that and then bring it back to Premiere and 
continue with my edit. When I was trying to make, because I made a video that was like a dear Casey Neistat video mm-hmm. where I tried to kind of use his style. And when I made that video, I had to make it chronologically. Yeah. I couldn't like script it out too much first. Mm-hmm. It, it couldn't match his style if yeah. I did it that way. Yeah. So, okay, here we go. And now that I look through it. Okay, come on. <laughs> so, um, by the way, we're like 37 seconds into the video at this point, And the amount of detail <laughs> and beauty in these shots is like incredible. <laughs> They're just so packed with fun little pieces of eye candy and like it's no wonder that millions of people watch your videos let's talk about this wonderful transition over the letters here yeah. how did you do that i did a mask not not an exact mask like uh-huh. a really rough mask around yeah. myself yep to transition the type. so so you you basically just like outlined a mask here yeah like right here okay. so i didn't have to like to outline the whole thing just the part that touched such as the title. right, yeah. and and you're you're using Premiere for the mask. Yeah, Premiere. Okay, it's not perfect, but yeah, you don't need it to be perfect. I, l- to the find. effect is so impactful and meaning. I mean, it works really well. Thank you. Um, d- so, do, are you filming at twenty four p or how? Yeah, do you film? 20, 20, 23. point nine seven. Okay, because you like that cinematic. Yeah, I like frame that rate. cinematic look. Yeah, yeah, me too. Okay, can we talk about the lighting here? Mm-hmm. So, is this your room or a different room in the house? In my room. That's this is room. your room still. Yeah. Okay, and so how? So this is all yellow, but but is it white walls and you have a yellow light? What's going on here? Yeah, well, the light is supposed to be motivated by this lamp, but it's a little bit exaggerated. So it's this lamp, and I have a big lamp over here. You use the term, the light is supposed to be motivated by yeah. this lamp. In other words, what you're saying is the conceit is that the light is coming from here. Yeah, well, part of the light, maybe you don't see the rest of the room, so you could imagine that there are other lamps, like practical lamps over here. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's basically supposed to be motivated by this little light right here. Yep. Okay. That's great. I mean, even the fact that you use the term motivated, clearly you're watching a lot of YouTube videos and stuff on lighting. And okay. All right. All right. What what are your favorite YouTube videos on lighting? What should we watch to make gong style videos? There's an Australian cinematographer, Louis Butts. Uh Uh-huh. He's great. He did a really awesome video on lighting. Okay, and great. also Danny Gebert. Yep. He's great as well. Okay, cool. Three, I realize. Who's shooting this? How are they getting that push in? That's my dad. I think that's my dad, yeah. Okay, and it's skateboard again? Skateboard, yeah. We filmed everything, the intro sequence, on the same day. Like in one hour, we filmed everything. Got it. And did you ask him to push in really fast? Really fast, yeah. Why did you want a fast push in there? Because the music gets a little bit more energetic and the story like build, is building up. So yeah. I went faster movement than before. Got it. I nice that there are only two pages left to go. So that's like a, this is like a 24 lens or something, or like a 16 even. This looks really wide. Yeah, this is, yeah, I think it's a 16, and 16 millimeter. Do you shoot on primes or do you use zoom lenses? How are you, do, how are you getting like a super wide shot like that? I use... I use a lot of lenses, like a lot of different lenses, but for this video, uh, the white shot is a uh, zoom. It's at 17 to 28. Okay. And Do you know what lens it is? Do you know what uh, yeah, who makes it? Yeah, it's a Tamron. 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 Lens. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. A 17 to 28 Tamron. 17 to 28. And for the rest of the video, I used a 31.4. Okay. From Sigma, which is APS-C, so it doesn't cover the full frame sensor of my camera, but... It doesn't really matter. Okay, so the FX3 is a full frame. Yeah. Okay, so that so this is like an actual 17 is what we're getting here. Yeah, the, this is an actual 17. Okay, wow, that's cool. It looks, <laughs> again, it looks so cartoony and wide and the distortion on your face, the lens distortion yeah. is so nice. Yeah, I like, I like wide lenses. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. I love them. Well, two and a half since one drawing just needs some color. Okay, I, so this is a famous gawk style yeah, shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen people trying to discuss how. how it okay, does. tell us about the rig. What do you got here? It's uh, my uh, FX3 with a small rig magic arm, which you mount on the camera on a cage, and then uh, I mount it to the marker, so you get the locked-in perspective. 
So you're not actually holding the marker. No. You're just... Mo- oh, so it's not locked onto your wrist. It's locked no. onto the marker. onto the marker, yeah. Back here? Yeah. And that's my dad's hand. Because I the the marker can't support the weight right. of, the, of the camera. So I had to hold the camera. And he's doing the marker movement. Okay, so... So let me see, <laughs> see if I can get this right. Yeah. So there's a marker. Yeah, it's like you're holding marker. Here, like this. Yeah. And, and there's a magic arm here. Yeah. Connected to the FX3 the, here. Which is here. Yeah. Okay. And you're doing the movement and I'm following you. Okay. So I'm going like this and you're following. Okay. But the, but the, the magic arm is attached to the marker. So I'm yeah. just trying to make sure that I move my hand at the right pace for the marker. Yeah. Fuck, that is so beautiful. <laughs> it's <you>. so beautiful. <laughs> Where did you get the idea for that shot? I don't know. I used to do it before I had a magic arm. I used to do that uh, since some of my first videos and I used to use tape. So I taped the the pen to my camera and I don't know where I got that. Maybe music videos. Music videos are a big source of inspiration as well. Yeah. And you do this sometimes with like forks as well. When uh, you're, yeah, yeah. And this video I do it with forks. You're later, like yeah. eating mango and stuff. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's 2022. So that's before. That's one year before. So this is a time lapse from 2022. Yeah, from 2022. Because this video wasn't supposed to... I wasn't going to finish it. But I was checking my hard drives and I found found some sequences. And I, oh, let's, let's finish this. So then is this on the rails that you had? Or? Yeah. Okay, so this is a motorized slider, yeah. but in time lapse mode. In time lapse mode. Yeah. And are you shooting one frame like every five seconds or something like that? How do you... No, I just film and the files get huge, but I just film. It's Oh, so you're just filming 24 frames a <laughs> yeah. second yeah, and then speeding it up. So yeah. you're moving the slider really slowly. Yeah. It moves like you can program it. So from here to here in 30 minutes. Got it. Yeah. Okay. All right. What kind of slider is this? It's a, a newer slider. It's the same brand of my old lights. It's Do- a budget slider a budget slider yeah. like on amazon or something yeah, on yeah. Amazon. i have one of those too and it's it comes with a little usb plug and you yeah. can kind of program it and do yeah, stuff they yeah they're great they're great it was um i think mine was something like 250 bucks or 300 yeah bucks my, and... mine as well it's now it's dying it's in, in its final stages but <laughs> it still works <laughs> <laughs> awesome okay let's let's keep looking here oh we see this kind of shot a lot where you have these massive backgrounds and this beautiful spotlight uh-huh. what is where is this how did you get this uh, that's in my room too uh, I used, uh, for that I used the lamp without the softbox and I don't have like a spotlight so I used some paper to create the spotlight effect. So I have this big lamp oh, behind the sketchbook, uh, the sketchbook uh, here, then I'm going in with uh, the the skateboards and I have another lamp right here which now will uh, turn on Okay. to sh- reveal and do you yeah. just you hook it up to a switch or something so you can move it in and then hit the switch? I, you can control it with your phone. Are you fading it in or did you like program a fade in? No, I'm fading it in. You're fading it in yeah, on like, your phone? Yeah, like move. You like can fade sl- it. <laughs> sliding the light up on your phone. Oh my God, let's look at this. Sorry, needed some color. <laughs> okay, and you got some lovely like film grain here. How are, yeah. you, are you adding that film grain in or? Yeah, I'm adding that in Da, Vin- in da Vinci, yeah. So you can so as part of your color correction you can add film grain. Yeah, you do can you, add. Do you add it on every shot or do you add film grain on the whole timeline? No, I add it on every shot. It's the same grain effect. Sometimes I do little changes. Uh-huh. But yeah, I grade every clip separately. Okay. Got it. So maybe a little different grain yeah, depending on the shot. Yeah. Okay. Color. Um, so today I'm going to finish a sketchbook in 24 hours. That's the one minute mark. Yeah. Um, so you have this rotating sketchbook in the air. <laughs> what? How did you get this? These are two different shots. So it's the background and the sketchbook shot. Uh, I tied the sketchbook to a string. Then I filmed, filmed it rotating behind... I don't have a green screen, so I used a green towel. <laughs> uh, I filmed that, then I removed the background, which I I don't use green screens very often, so that's a whole process. I So I had now the sketchbook rotating in transparent background, and then I added the background shot of me going in. So I just mixed them. 
and pro corrected and so did you have to like zoom in on the sketchbook yeah to I, make zoom, it? I zoomed in on the sketchbook and the background is just a, a doll a in yeah i'm going to finish a sketchbook in 24 hours and then you you key you motion yeah, key the I sketchbook motion key, down. yeah going okay down. let's do it okay this music choice here is so hot that <laughs> like coming in right yeah. with act one that's just and it's so different than the classical music we've been feeling to this moment so um uh yeah how do you like how do you how do you find the right music for the moment in a film that you're making uh, I, I think it's intuitive but uh i just try a bunch of options and if i find something that feels right i edit a little bit and then decide if I want to keep it or not. I have another question for you yeah. here. You, you sort of say things like, I'm finishing a sketchbook in 24 hours. <laughs> so then we think like, oh, we're going to watch you do this in 24 hours. But the, all these shots take like days to do. Yeah, yeah. So you're not, are you actually filming yourself doing it in 24 hours? At first, I just filmed the time lapses of me drawing and all these shots because it does, yeah, I can do that. And then... I filmed this later. So I filmed me drawing the sketchbook, like just time lapses and some simple shots. And then I build the rest of the story later. I see. Okay. So you actually do finish a sketchbook yeah. in 24 hours. But in this in this video, I, I well, it's spoilers if you haven't seen it. I don't manage to, fin to finish it in 24 hours. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> okay. Got it. But then you, okay. So you tell the rest of the story over the next month and a half. When you yeah. Finish. Okay. Wow. So you're scrapping together skateboards and yeah. Premiere and masks and like all these tools that literally now most people in the world have access to. Yeah. Like you kind of don't have anything that like, I mean, the FX3 is yeah, a nice it's camera. A, yeah, it's a, it's nice a very camera. nice camera. But but then you started shooting on your iPhone and you're saying it looks just as good. So like, why does your shit look so good <laughs> compared to everybody else's? Oh, well, I think it's the experience because sometimes... I well sometimes I try something new and it looks horrible so I don't use it but it's it's the yeah like you have to try experiment with the shots maybe it will look bad at the start but if you try something different it might look better uh, lighting is a great aspect of it because the lighting can turn like a very boring scene into something interesting so yeah spending time on your lighting spending time Framing the shots uh, is is the like the main thing. I just spend time trying it for it to look good. Yeah. And if it doesn't, well, maybe it will look better in the future when you are have more knowledge. This is kind of mind blowing. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah. I I forgive the question, but how old are you? I'm twenty. <laughs> yeah. But when you think about like your twenties and yeah. your thirties. Um, like, do you ha have goals about being a filmmaker? Like, do you want to do what? What sort of things do you want to do? I well, I want to be a film director. I want to make movies. Well, I have to start with short films, which I also want to make. But yeah, the end goal is to make make films, like yeah, feature films. Right. I mean, you're on your way. <laughs> <laughs> 